Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, firstly, thanks, Matt, Josh, Rob, and the Atlas team for the opportunity of speaking today. We're really glad to support your initiatives here. And thank you, John, for a really interesting presentation. I was uh, uh, lucky enough to go on for two, two of the three building conferences. <coughs> um, and after about five years of doing this, I can say that it's moved ahead in leaps and bounds in the last 12 months. So it's pretty exciting times. Um, I'm here to talk about project wise. Um, so very quickly, the Bentley team who's here today, myself, uh, I'm the Senior Account Manager, I'm based out of Sydney. Uh, I do recognise quite a few faces in the audience. I have been right on this very spot with a competitor and that wasn't Graphisoft for many years, so you may be familiar with me from that side. Robert Smith, my colleague down the corner there, um, say hi Robert. Robert is our Project Wise, project -wise Consultant. Um, he's recently joined Bentley. Um, he was also on the dark side with me for a little while. Until recently, Robert uh, was uh, one of the managers of Project Wise uh, with PB on the D cell plant, which I think is going really well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm out of state, I really don't know. Okay, agenda. Very briefly about Bentley, I will keep that mercifully brief. Uh, challenges and barriers to collaboration. And I want to really go back to basics on this. Um, really, just what is project wise, how does it work, and what works with it and the competitive advantages. Now, I did put some Q&A here, but I think we'll do what Matt suggests and we might hold questions till after so we can keep uh, the flow of the presentations going. Okay, straight off our website, and I'm not going to bore you too much, but we're global leader dedicated to providing architects, engineers, constructors, owner operators with comprehensive software solutions for sustaining infrastructure. Um, founded in 1984, 3,000 colleagues, 45 countries, 5 million in annual revenues, 1 billion in research. Look, cut all that aside, what that means is we're a global player. We're, depending on where you sit, number two, number three, sometimes number one in the, in the global space. So that's a bit about us. Uh, our, our major project, uh, our major platform here that many of you will be aware of is uh, MicroStation, and that's been around pretty much since 84. Okay, when we're looking at the industry and really feeding off uh, what John has um, just presented, we look at project challenges, and I wouldn't say this is necessarily just about projects. Um, this could be industry as well. If you look at the business of what we're doing, um, we call it schedule compression. Other people call it scope creep, whatever you want to call it. Basically, I think everyone in the room would know that we're doing it faster, and we're expecting it to do it faster. Demand for new deliverables, information modeling. Okay, we're doing things differently as well as faster. Managing information technology. From an architectural point of view, it's not good enough just to be an architectural shop with someone who knows how to plug in a few PCs anymore. You've really got to understand your IT infrastructure. Um, geography, we put this up here because we've seen, and I'm sure you agree, a very big change in the way we're all working. Um, larger architectural firms are getting larger, smaller ones are working collaboratively with others all across the country and indeed across the world. So that geographic connection of just working within one office is no longer, so we're working in diverse places. So that's, you know, controlling travel expenses is one thing, but responding to the opportunities in different locations. People, look, this is, not, this is nothing new, bringing the right skills to the right projects has always been an issue. Maximising your staff has always been an issue, and especially establishing and maintaining common standards, something that John's certainly touched on. Where we see some barriers to collaboration, and once again, this is by no means exhaustive, but we believe that design and engineering content demands are unique. There is a lack of interoperability at the moment. Um, John certainly touched on that. And one thing that um, is a bugbear for everybody is as we're using the technology and as the technology is increasing, large files are becoming the norm and they're very difficult to share. There's, that's a common thing we hear back from our local clients. And when I, the next point is not everyone has the right software. And that's not saying it's got to be Bentley. I'm saying right for the project. So depending on whatever software you're on, you may be in collaboration with somebody else who's on a completely different format. Once again, teams are distributed across offices and organisations. Um, JVs, particularly in the engineering space, are now the norm. JVs in the architectural space are certainly getting that way. Slow and unreliable network connections, we all know about that. Different processes and standards across your own organisation and others. Time wasted looking for information. That's, uh, we've done a research project in the States um, and I've got some information in an AVI on that that touches on that. 
Um, while it was based on engineers, uh, there was certain feedback about the design industry in general, and I think a lot of the stats sort of hold true for us. Uh, project design content is constantly changing, never more so than now. Um, current data, absolutely critical. Complex interdependent relationships, so one person working on a drawing in isolation isn't the norm anymore. Lack of real-time synchronisation is a big issue as well. What, as I said, not exhaustive, but we see these as barriers that are in the market at the moment. Okay, so project-wise, it's been around for quite a while. Uh, some slight branding changes across the years, but really what is it? Now, it wouldn't be a software vendor presentation if you didn't have one of these sorts of descriptions. It's a project team collaboration work sharing platform for the design and construction of infrastructure projects. <gasps> Big site that provides scalable, industry-proven, integrated engineering content management, multi-channel multi content publishing, and iterative project review capabilities for work in progress. Now, that's direct from our marketing team, if you like, or our website for them. I would suggest that's not a sentence you would ordinarily get up as an answer if you asked. Usually coming along with those is at least one graphics. So probably the main, major point to this one is there's three parts you see in the project-wise circle. Content management, content publishing, and project review. Now there's different ways to access it, there's different ways to get into it. But what I wanted to do, as I said, is take this back to basics. So I get asked quite a few times from different people in the, 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 the industries, architects in particular, engineers especially, yeah, what is it? So for me, just to take it back down to base, it's a program that provides, and the most important word here is foundation for collaboration and data files, sharing and management between different parties. It's really important to note that those different parties can be internal teams. I mean, you may have a project team sitting on one side of the office and another one on the other. Um, it could be teams of different disciplines in, in the office, it could be landscape architects, architects, colleagues in different locations, Melbourne, Sydney, Singapore, or even separate companies as JV Alliances. Sorry. So what does it do? When most people first see project-wise, they think, ah, oh, document management. And look, yes, indeed many of the features you see immediately look like that. The big difference, and I want to stress this with project-wise, it has been designed specifically for design, architectural engineering data, and models. So new models in particular. So it's suited for architects, engineers, and designers. Is it suitable for any Bentley products? I'm glad to say as a software vendor, actually no. Project-wise is deliberately open to the majority of programs used in the design and construction industry. It's not 100% for everybody yet, but it's a complete evolution. It will keep going and keep including new formats. So how do you access it? It's usually installed on a server located within the organisation. It can be hosted by us and accessed remotely. It's also possible for one company to host as a lead for a project, for example, and allow access to another's project-wise server through what we call passports. If you own any Bentley products at all, you automatically have a passport already. Um, as I said, we can host it for you. Is it valid for one project? No, it is absolutely scalable and once installed can be used on any or all selected projects. It can be used across your office or you may just ring fence part of your office and use it there. The more it's used, obviously, the more capacity or server capacity and passports required. What's involved? Probably important to note, it's not a desktop solution. It's actually a server-based solution, so there is the requirement for implementation. Training is critical for that, but I would suggest not onerous in the least. And it's done as a project and managed by uh, Robert and the team in Bentley's Professional Services. So what type of files formats? Majority of file formats in design and construction as mentioned, so PDF, DGM, DWG, Revit, DXF, DWF, GBM, Excel, and as well as the Office uh, formats. That's not exhaustive, but that's just a general taste. Now, the one question I always get asked is, look, isn't it just like Windows Explorer? Uh, yes and no. Now, um, just a quick show of hands. Who uses Explorer in some format to help with your data management? Windows? Yeah, OK. But we, I, I guess all of us would be familiar with Explorer. Now, when I'm talking to clients, we do a, a very quick scoping document with them. And it's really you know, 50 questions maximum, usually only 20. Now, I asked an engineer just recently when we were doing this process, and this is, this is one of the standard questions we've got. So, 
Do you have any Mavericks in your office that would like to remove or rename files? For example, and it would never happen, I know, would anyone ever rename a file bob1.dgm, dwg, whatever? The resounding answer was a yep. How do you currently handle these situations? Now, a little blunt, but perhaps showing a little of his frustration. <laughs> and the next question is, how is it working for you? <laughs> now, as I said, a little blunt, but I did like that, and I am on the verge of going back to the global marketing team to see if that could be our new project-wise tagline for when you're running out of bullets. So, but that was an answer to how they used it, particularly in light of you know, Windows Explorer. What I'd like to do now is show you, this is about a six or seven minute uh, little ABI, and once, once again, this just touches on what project-wise looks like, because as a solution-based um, offering, it's not something you just plug into your PC and go. So, what I've done is just taking an ABI, this comes uh, from the States, so there's a little bit of, of American flavour to it, but generally, it's a very quick overview of what ProjectWise offers in comparison to what a lot of you would recognise as Windows, Windows Explorer. So.